Hi, this is Bill from CJ Pony Parts. Today we're going to be installing a set of our popular LED halo headlights in a 1967 Mustang. The LED halos are available in two different sizes, the 5 and 3 quarter inch which will fit your 69 Mustang and the original 7 inch style which will fit your 64 through 68 as well as your 70 through 73. There's also two different versions available, the original which is a 42 LED white light as well as a 21 LED multicolor which can be controlled with the remote control that's included with the lights. All of our Halo headlights are assembled in the USA using a diamond cut glass front. They come with a removable H4 bulb that will plug into your stock wiring. The H4 bulb is going to be approximately 50% brighter than your original seal beam headlights, so not only are these a cosmetic upgrade, they're also a safety upgrade. We mocked up the 70 headlight bucket to show you what the LED headlight actually looks like when it's installed. It mounts in the original location as we discussed before using the original headlight plug. The LEDs include two separate wires which would typically run to your parking lights. That will allow you to run the LEDs as a daytime running light by just turning on your parking light switch. We hooked up a 12 volt battery so we could demonstrate the brightness of the LED. The white LEDs will be legal for most use, but you want to check with your state just to make sure they're not illegal. The multicolor LEDs are illegal for road use or for off-road use or for show use only. The multicolor does include a white light for street use, but any of the other colors are strictly forbidden on the highway. Since we showed you the white LED mocked up on our 70 headlight bucket, we're actually going to install the multicolor LED halos into our 67 Mustang. The multicolors come with a few more parts. The white halos are a simple two-wire install. The multicolors are going to include the lights, two ceramic extensions, the remote control as we showed before, and the control box with wiring. This is the control box unit for the multicolor lights. The box itself is not waterproof, so you want to make sure you install it inside your vehicle so you have no issues with the IR sight in line so the remote can see it. The harness here is going to go out to each individual headlight. Well, this harness here must be hooked up to power and ground. For this installation, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, a crimping tool, a solder connector or a soldering iron, a wire stripper, and some zip ties. Here we are with our 67 Mustang out of the shop. The first part of the installation is to remove the existing headlights. Step one is to remove the trim ring, which is held on by three Phillips head screws. Now you want to remove the trim ring which holds the headlight itself in place. The trim ring is held in place by three screws, two on each in the bottom, one on the top. You do not have to remove these screws all the way, just loosen them enough and you can turn the trim ring and remove it. At this point, your headlight is no longer attached to the car. Simply pull it out, reach behind it, remove the plug, and set it aside. We've moved the interior of our 67 Mustang now to do the wiring. We remove the gauge cluster in advance to make it easier to get to the wiring. If you've never moved the gauge cluster, it's fairly simple. It's held in place by three screws across the top of the cluster, one screw on the side, two underneath each gauges, and a speed nut that's behind the radio. There's four screws that hold on the radio. You can simply remove the bezel, access the back of the cluster and remove your cluster. We started the installation of the box by hooking up the power and ground. The ground is simply ground to the chassis. The power wire can be installed in several different locations. In case of our 67, there's an extra wire for the fog lights which is not used on this vehicle. We were able to get the 12 volt source. From 64 to 73, that wire is going to differ. You want to find a wire that has 12 volt power when your lights are on. That way the halos will turn on the same time the headlights do. You want your LED eye visible so you can aim the remote at it to adjust the on off of light as well as change color and change brightness. We mounted ours in the far corner of the dashboard here so you can actually use the remote inside or outside the vehicle if you want to adjust the lights. We connect this to the 12 volt power and now we're ready to fish the wires forward into the engine compartment. The control box is very lightweight. It comes with two holes where you could screw it in place if you wanted to, but since it's light we're simply going to zip tie it in place out of the way underneath the dashboard. The next step is to feed the wire from the control box to your headlights. The wires run in series, so there's one he only one wire you need to run. We chose to put the wire through the grommet for our speedometer cable to protect the wire. If you don't want the wire touching bare metal, you want to make sure there's using some sort of a grommet. 
We then ran the wire along the factory harness up to a hole in the apron where we fed the wire to our left headlight and then ran it across the grill to our right headlight. Now you want to fish each of the headlight wiring harnesses up through the headlight bowl. Fish the wire through and you want to pull out the original headlight plug. Fish that through as well. Grab the supplied connector. Connect to the original plug. This time you can plug in your new Halo headlight by plugging in your new extension harness. And plugging in the harness from the box that you just ran. This time would be a good idea once you've connected both lights, hook power back up and then check to see if the lights are functioning before you bolt them back in place. Now you want to push your headlight back up into the bowl and carefully reinstall the original trim ring. Now you want to tighten down the screws that hold on the headlight retaining ring. Make sure not to over tighten them. It is a glass lens. You just want to make sure that they are snug. Now you want to reinstall the original retaining ring. Make sure the screws are tight, but don't over tighten them. and your headlight installs complete. At this point, you want to duplicate the process with the passenger side and assemble it in the same way we did as the driver's side. Now it's time to test your lights. Simply turn on your parking lights and the halos will illuminate. You have several different options. The base colors are going to be red, green, blue, or white, which is a mixture of all the colors that has a slight purplish tint, but is close to white. You also have several custom colors you can choose from. There's 16 different custom tints. You can also choose a flash option, a fade, and a strobe light option. The lights can be turned on or off by remote control, and you can also adjust the brightness. Once you turn your headlights on, the halos will stay illuminated. Again, you want to make sure that you do not have any color besides white on when traveling on a public highway. You can choose to turn the halo off and just run the H4 bulbs, which like I said, are approximately 50% brighter than your stock bulbs. So it makes this a safety upgrade as well as a cosmetic one. The installation should take roughly three hours depending on your wiring skill and the condition of your original parts. So you'll be back on the road in no time. Thank <laughs> you.